All right, the vlog begins. Uh, it's a little dark. How about this? We will flip on a switch. All right, here you go, guys. For those of you who've been wondering what it's like to vlog at night, per se, with a light, this is that moment. Let's go to work at six, six o'clock in the morning. Mm, closer to seven. I'm not gonna lie to you. I can see whatever I want, you'd believe me. I think but I can't see a thing because I am being completely blinded by my light. We will take that car. I'm surprised my wife let her have the truck today. All right, welcome to the day job I just got here. Uh, the light that I'm using right now is set at the very lowest setting possible. And the way I am balancing it out is I have my camera set with auto ISO and auto white balance. So everything is auto right now, per se, except for, of course, shutter speed and everything, which uh, I work by the rule of 180, though I don't follow it exclusively. Uh, that's something, if you want to look up the rule of 180 degree shutter, uh, if you need to know more about that, that's a very important thing to know. <laughs> Just realized I still have my uh, filter on the camera. All right, guys, so I'm out here on the river uh, near where I live. And I figured this would be a good opportunity to show you guys a little bit more about how you can actually put this light to good use. It's not just a night thing. I wanna show you how you can use it to make your stuff look a lot better, even in the day. Uh, now, I still need to take you home, and I need to show you the setup that I'm doing to do this little video here real quick, because it's kind of comical. Uh, there's an important thing you should probably know about using a light on your camera. We're gonna talk about that when we get home. First things first, if you're ever a videographer or a photographer, you're always looking for shade. It's nice to have a sunny day, but a sunny day does not help you make good videos. Uh, as you can see, the back of me is all blown out completely. Everything in the front looks pretty decent, like me, because I always look decent. But in saying that, uh, shade isn't a very important thing to have because you can control the light that's in front of you. Now. Cameras on ISO auto, uh, auto uh, white balance, and everything is set to record in 4K. I'm even using a filter to kind of knock down some of the light just a little bit so I can shoot, I think, at like 3.5. So in saying that, this is nice. I'm obviously okay, uh, and I'm lit all right, but what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and turn on the light that I have on the camera here, okay? So I'm just going to turn it on just a tiny bit. This is at its lowest setting. You might not see a difference. You may. Uh, but remember, we're in the shadows, so sometimes it's nice just to boost up that face just a little bit. So reaching back here, I'll find the booster, and I'm going to turn all the way up. That's 100%. I can feel it on my face. I can see the reflection in my glasses, per se. This is at 100%, and this is how light can benefit you in a shadow area. But this is not the only area where it's going to come in handy. Let me show you this. Still shooting ISO auto, though I can easily set this to 100 and know I'd be just fine. Shooting at 1 50th of a second in auto, uh, white balance. But the key thing here is I'm shooting at the highest f-stop that my camera can possibly get because it's so bright. My assumption, I'm either at f-16 or f-22 right now everything's in focus I don't care how far back you look everything's gonna be in focus so let's see what happens now if we put the light at our back and light ourselves with our light on top of the camera first off I'm assuming you guys are gonna be very blinded right now by the Sun I you might have to control that by how you choose to tilt your camera to hide or block the Sun even now I'm seeing the Sun blocking light on the lens itself and I have to put my hand to block that light that's the nice thing about having the little filter, not the filters, but the little lens hoods, which is trying to do something, but until I get here, that lens hood is not doing anything until about here. But even in this right here, you can tell that my whole face is cast in shadow, and I got all this light behind me. Let me go ahead and turn on my little light. It's not much, but it's just enough to make it count. That's 100%. And we'll see what that does when we get home. Okay, so we're back in the car. I'm about to head on home so we can take a look at all this footage and uh, get back into the studio. But first, let's talk a little bit about doing this in the car here. So I'm shooting at 1,000 ISO. I've decided to control my ISO here because as the camera looks at me and looks out the window, it wants to change ISOs and compensate. Uh, this is where we need to remember if you're looking at different dynamic ranges, you have to learn to control those dynamic ranges with your ISO 
with your aperture, with your shutter speed, all of that detail goes into a single shot. So here's what we got. We're in a darker car. It's an all tan interior, but once again, we're in shadow, uh, just like we were underneath the tree out there. But this is a bit more intense because we are completely blocking the sun. So what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and turn on the light and I want to show you what the light's going to do on my face here. Uh, we have a blinding river out here. This is actually a river covered in ice and snow. And then we're inside here and we're dealing more with all this shadow. So let's go ahead and turn on this light. And I'm, I think I have it set to the lowest setting right now. That's like nothing very much at all. It's just, it's low power, okay? I don't know if that casts any extra lighting on my face. Let's go ahead and pop it up. And I'm going to pop it up to 100%. Uh, the, when I get it to 100%, I can personally feel it reflecting off my glasses and in my face. Um, and I know it's casting some kind of light on my face. Uh, it's in areas like this that make all the difference. Now, remember a very important rule it's called the reverse square i believe it's the reverse square or inverse square uh the more your light is away from your face the the, the more it's going to get dark obviously that's obvious but the extent that that happens can be pretty impressive um, and and it's math that I don't like to do I choose not to do it but the long story short is even if I move the camera this far away I could be losing several stops of light and it's rather intense so remember that a light is very key keeping it close to your face is kind of important but remember the closer it is the more of a hard shadow it's going to cast on your face so if you want natural light and calm light you got to work with diffusion light you can't work with something like a blown out LED if you're not okay with hard light okay best way to do that is to bounce the LED off of something uh, a white t-shirt uh, anything a, a, a wall uh, whenever I do photography I use a wall and I bounce my flash off the wall that's how that works arms are getting tired I'm gonna go ahead and take this camera home you really do need to see what I'm doing to record this it is rather comical and not exactly user-friendly I'll show you when we get home let's get back to the studio all right come on focus 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 this is an older lens i'm shooting on the sony a6000 and i'm using my 18 to 55 kit lens which has a little bit more to be desired when it comes to autofocus so get ready this will be interesting but anyway let's go ahead and finish off this video by showing you the option that you will need if you choose to do uh, light on top of your camera. Let me go ahead and start by showing you the top of what we have here. This is a microphone mounted on a light, mounted on top of a camera with my 16 millimeter Sigma 1.6 one, uh, on it. This unfortunately is the contraption that I have been carrying around with me all day today uh, in the videos that you have been seeing. Uh, and here's the reason why I have it like this. Uh, you can mount on this light. This light is nice. As you can see, it's got these little divots right here. You can mount this to any side of this that you would want to. Um, and if you have a hot shoe on your camera, like this camera does, except that I have my small rig on here, you'll be just fine mounting the light to the camera. And then there you go. Unless you want good quality audio, then you get the Video Micro from Rode, or you get the Video Mic Pro, and you try to mount that on top and stretch the cable, and this is the Frankenstein option that you get. Uh, now, if you're not too worried about a microphone, then this is gonna work out just fine. Just take off the microphone, use the microphone built into the camera, but I can guarantee the quality is not going to be nearly as well as you're gonna get with a proper microphone with a wind guard on it, also known as a dead cat. I think we're missing a very important fundamental principle to keep in mind as well, and that's that objects cause shadow. If you don't like my leaning tower of Pisa and you're going, well, Tim, the light is amazing because it's got soft shoes on the side. Why don't you just mount your stuff to the side of the light instead of going on top and making it tall as ever? Because now you're causing an area where the light is blocked on the side. And because of that, that's causing a bunch of shadow hits. So if I turn on this light and turn it towards me, now I'm not going to get that full control of the light because there is a shadow object that's going to block that light. Unless you like controlling the light that way, that's not how it's supposed to be done because, and you can see it right here, there's a humongous whopping circle right here on my shoulder and that's because of this 
big, humongous dead cat on the side of my camera. This is the problem with having your light mounted on your camera. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about this and another technique that I use to get the light off the camera in a different way. I think it's kind of unique. I don't know anyone else who does it except for underwater sea divers. But this is something that you need to be aware of. That just shot everywhere. <laughs> so when you choose to get this stuff, you need to keep in mind that you need a place for your light and you need a place for your audio. Keep that in mind. And anywhere where you're gonna put that light, keep an eye out what the light is going to be touching. Uh, the lens itself is an area that's gonna cast shadow somewhere because that light is right above the lens. So keeping in that all in mind, I personally like to take the light off the camera, much like a cell phone, but this is a really excellent light. It's much better than a cell phone light, I'll tell you that because it's a bigger light source than a single LED on the back of your, your phone. And what I do is I turn on the light and I control the light with my other hand, okay? Just by turning it down to a smaller, not nearly as bright, that's nice, that's at its lowest setting, I can control the light and I can choose where I want it to be. And I can hold my camera out in front of me and I can get the good audio and I can control the light here. And if I got a close up close shot, if I get really close to you guys, and I put this light over my shoulder, kind of like this, over you guys, and I get my arm just right, it doesn't look like I'm holding anything up. Well, it kind of does, but you learn to do this stuff so that you can get the best light possible. And even with my studio light, <laughs> this looks kind of cool. Long story short, folks, there are a lot of pros to having a light. To be able to utilize that light in so many different lighting scenarios, it's not just about vlogging at night. It will work just fine to vlog at night. Here's what you need to expect, though. The light is very spot light. Now, I'm not talking just this light from Godox, which is the LED 64, uh, which is the light that has helped me make my name on YouTube, but any LED light is still going to be that spotlight effect. And that's because it's such a small box, a wonderful box, but a small box nonetheless. So here's how you gotta move forward with this kind of stuff. When you go out and you plan on shooting a vlog at night, expect it to look like a spotlight's hitting you in the face. There's no way to not have that scenario go down. There's nothing wrong with that though. Learn to utilize it to your benefit. Uh, light can be bounced. Bounce that light wherever you can. Maybe instead of mounting it on your camera, hand hold it. I'm gonna try, try, mind you, to find a picture of myself dressed up as a Mad Hatter last Halloween, and I want you to see the light that I'm using here. This is two of these LEDs from Godox. Let me pull this off my camera here. Two of these LED Godox lights, and you can see that I have them mounted to two uh, magic arms, okay? And I love these magic arms. I have two of them mounted right here in front of me holding my gear. Another one's holding my webcam over here. Magic arms or zero gravity arms are amazing pieces of technology. Whoever invented them was a pure genius. But what I'm saying is, I use two of those and I mount a light to each one and I put them as far away from the camera on opposite sides as possible. Why? Because I'm trying to make a larger single light source. So that way when the light is on you, it's not blaring you square in the face like a deer in the headlights, it's enveloping you with light, which makes for a much more natural light look. That is exactly why in my first video that I'm going to put a card right up here for you to get to, you're gonna see how I've talked about setting up light so that it works best for you. One light here, one light 45 degrees in the other way directly between the camera and shoot at you like this to get the best picture you can get. You get what I'm saying? There's a lot of interesting stuff you can do with two lights. And I'm telling you, just get two of these guys. I'll include a link if it's still up on YouTube, on Amazon. I'm sure it is, because these lights are amazing, and Godox is an amazing company. I love Godox. And I want you to give these lights a shot. They're really cool. By the way, if you buy them through my link, uh, I get a little cut, and it's no extra cost to you. It's called being an Amazon affiliate, and it's a wonderful thing. And it just helps us try to keep our YouTubes alive. By the way, Godox, contact me. I am one of your biggest fans. I own so much of your stuff. You need to contact me and we need to talk a little bit. Get a hold of me. Let's talk shop a little bit and see what we can do for each other. I think that would be amazing. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Questions, put them down below. I got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about with you. We're going to continue to talk about the idea 
uh, in in my last video, here's the card for that last video talking about shooting content fast. I stopped on the way home from work uh, next to the river, shot the video that you saw today, boom, 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 raced home, sat down, recorded this, boom, now it's going to go right to the editing room and we're going to get this done. Uh, this is how fast I work and I want to teach you guys how this is done. Um, if you are a person who just needs to have a little bit of time to release a video quickly, these upcoming videos are going to help you a lot. I guarantee it. Uh, if you're a person who wants to be more detailed, I'm excited for you. I wish I had more time to do what you and I aspire to do. Um, and that's something that maybe I'll learn in time. But for now, let me teach you just the basics to help us get started, you know, help you push into making videos quickly. When you start making videos quickly and getting them out, that is a chance of possible revenue as your YouTube continues to grow. It's an exciting thing. I have one channel that's bringing me revenue. I make a couple I make a, I make about a hundred bucks every six months right now, which is not bad at all, considering that there's many YouTubers who aren't even making a cent. So let me teach you a little bit more about it as we go along, and hopefully, because we're doing this together, maybe I'll make a couple extra hundred every now and then. Okay, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for hanging out with me here at Legacy Studio. Bye.